Hello, this is Tofan Trifo Productive with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to showcase an add-on that also applies fog to your scene easily with just a few clicks. It's just like the easy fog add-on, but it has more presets and obviously more uh, settings you can adjust to get the fog that you need. And I'm using Blender 2.92. It's actually for 2.93 and above. But it seems to work pretty good in 2.92. And the developer has made it available for demo purposes too. So you can go down to uh, the site. I'll leave a link of it. So just go to uh, Blender Market. And you can download the demo and try it for yourself for free. Uh, it have limited features, but you'll get a, a taste of how it actually works. And once you've downloaded onto your system, uh, the installation still process is still the same. Go to edit. Preferences, install, navigate to where you've downloaded onto your system, click on that, and then click on install add-on. I've already done that myself. And then you just put a check in the box and it's activated. And we're going to get rid of this cube. And I'm going to introduce Suzanne to the scene by pressing Shift A, go up to mesh, left click on monkey. And we're going to hold down the middle mouse button to pivot. And then we're going to kind of make it a little bit smooth by pressing W and Shade Smooth. And then once it's activated inside of Blender, so on the right hand side, which is over here of uh, your user interface in Blender, your toolbar, and it's right here. Like I said before, it's got a lot of presets, and they're not all, all the presets are on label. They're just labeled like 1 through uh, 26. There aren't any like preset names, it's just fog 1, fog 2, fog 3, which is fine too. Uh, but let's choose one. Let's choose this one. And apply fog to selected objects. Let's click on that. And it automatically puts a box around uh, your model to contain the fog because it's a volumetric element inside of Blender. So it needs to be contained inside a cube in order for it to render properly. Uh, in order for us to see it, Let's click on our shader viewport. Left click on that icon. And there we go. It renders in EV and in cycles. And obviously it looks better in cycles. Uh, EV is kind of a little bit on choppy side as you can see. So let's turn it to cycles. Left click on the render tab there. EV, cycles, CPU. Don't lag too much. GPU. And that speeds it up. And the fog looks pretty good. And for most of the presets, if not for all of them, it's two sets of fog. Uh, now you have a lot of options here to choose from. And the top, let me see, one, two, three, four, five uh, parameters up here are labeled, but the ones at the bottom aren't. So I don't know if you're somebody who's new to the add-on, you would know what these do. But in order for you to find out what they do, just crank it up to whatever levels you want it to do or to be and then you'll know what it does now according to what's labeled here once you can change one side uh, the parameters over here are the same on this side also the same uh, result but let's change the color of, of our fog let's click on that I uh, this tab or this opening here turn this to green see the fog at the bottom right hand corner turns to green Left click on that section there and let's turn this one to a purple or uh, purple pinkish or pinkish color. And it looks pretty good. Now you can change the seed obviously. Let's turn this to, let's see what this does to enter for the green and change the seed. Now the changes that are made with these uh, parameters here, they're solid enough that you can make a difference but not so extreme. Left click in there, let's turn this to 12 enter and the scale of it makes it bigger if you make it smaller you have more more separated fogs so let's turn this to like maybe one enter you can see the fog is kind of wispy which is cool uh, the distortion as it's, it's labeled or the roughness actually as it's labeled that lets you know how rough the fog can be if we turn this up to one enter the fog is um, not as wispy. 
Turn this down to 0.5, enter. It's a little bit more wispy, which is not bad. The distortion does probably does the same thing. But like I said before, with these bottom four parameters, it just says from and to. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Usually when you hover your mouse over um, these parameters, they'll, it'll tell you, give you a description of what these do, but there is no description. Let's see what they do. Let's click on from. Left click on those, turn this up to 15. Let's see what it does to the green fog. Enter. And it fills it up. Okay, did not really expect that to happen, but it fills that up. So let's turn that to a smaller number. Let's say 0.5. Enter. Now, the thing I've seen with this add on in comparison to the Easy Fog add on, once you kind of boost these up to a high level or high amount, it fills up the cube. But once you reduce it back, it goes back to a more reasonable looking uh, fog simulation. With the Easy Fog add on, it doesn't do that. Once you boost it up, it just stays at that amount of fillage, so to speak. And if you, and if you reduce the amount or the number in easy, the Easy Fog add on, it just still fills up the cube, which is not helpful. But this doesn't do that, which is, which is nice. Let's see what this from does left click on that so let's put in 12 enter oh I guess it moves the fog up in the cube oh, that's I didn't expect that either okay let's uh, reduce that let's minimize that to point two enter okay well that's kind of helpful so if you want the fog and I think all of these parameters obviously they're all um, you can animate all of them you just hover and then press I and then that, when it's yellow like that, that means it's animated. Press Control Z to redo that or um, unanimated, so to speak. Um, so if you want a situation where you want the fog to kind of drift up, just go to From here and type in the number. And it'll just kind of cause the fog to drip to drift up. You have to start from a lower number first, then go down your timeline and put in a higher number, have it drift up. Let's see what the two. Uh, two minimum, I think that is. Let me pull this out. Two minimum. See what that does. So it's at point zero three. Now let's left click on that. Uh, change that to twelve. Enter, and that fills up the cube, which isn't bad. So let's go back to point zero three again to redo that. Let's go. Let's go to to two maximum. Like I said before, I don't know what these do, but like I said before, if you type in numbers, you'll figure out what it does as you look at how it's being displayed in the. Uh, user interface there now to maximum let's left click in that and let's reduce that because it's a high number let's reduce that to 2 see what that does and it makes it less okay so that's what it does that's what all these these four do so that's pretty cool and like I said before whatever uh, changes you make here as you can see the results this is the same for the second fall parameters just adjust those also to your liking and you can change the location of the fog and rotation and the scale and so on and so forth. But one thing I've seen also with this add-on that is kind of, uh, I guess, can be helpful and might not be helpful. If you choose, usually if you have uh, the cube selected and you choose another preset here, it'll change, it'll replace the old with the new. With this, it doesn't do that. It just puts the new one on top of the old one, which is can be helpful. But if you're not aware of it, it can be frustrating because it's going to cause your computer to really lag a lot. Let's click on this one. And let's click on the apply fog to select it. And it just puts that second layer of fog, which are these like uh, dense black specks of smoke, over the top of the old fog. And if you're not aware of this and you keep adding and adding and adding different kinds of fog, thinking that you're replacing the old with the new, it's going you try to render it out it's going to be a problem for your system so just be aware of that once you if you want to render something new a new set of uh, fog parameters onto your model delete the old one first and replace it with a new one manually or if you just want to just simulate something weird or strange with different kinds of fog happening at the same time just leave it as it is so yeah, that's the, today's Blender Quick Tip, which is the easy or the sorry about the sorry about that the Alt Tab Fog. That's a strange name for an add-on.
but the alt tab fog add on and it's not not bad yeah uh hopefully uh hopefully this was a helpful tip for you those of you who are watching if you want to apply a fog to your scene and uh thank you guys who have been watching the videos and uh subscribing to the channel those of you who are subscribed in the past those of you who are subscribing now and those of you who are subscribing in the future and i will see you on the next one all right adios